My name is Rob Scott. I work at Google. I've been working on Kubernetes networking for a little over five years. Uh, most recently, I've been doing a lot of gateway API things, and so I'll be using some gateway API examples in here. Um, but really, before I worked uh, on Kubernetes, I spent a lot of time as an end user of Kubernetes actually trying to run the thing. And so I'm very familiar with some of the painful things that can happen when things don't go quite as you'd expect. And so today I'm going to be talking about how you can upgrade safely and avoid the many pitfalls of Kubernetes versioning and maybe hopefully also understand what's happening behind the scenes because there's a lot of confusing terms in Kubernetes versioning. So to start off, how many people here have been burned by some kind of Kubernetes upgrade gone wrong? OK. Uh, definitely myself, and it seems like most of you. I'm hoping this talk will help many of us avoid future pain. That's the goal. Hopefully, we can, we can get there. And to do that, I want to walk through three distinct painful upgrades. And I'm going to focus on painful upgrades that I'm at least partially responsible for myself. So I'm going to be making fun of myself here a lot. Uh, but we're going to start with Ingress API. So how many people here were around for Kubernetes 122? OK, that's great. That's great. If you were around for Kubernetes 122, this story may sound familiar to you. I hope it doesn't, but we'll just say. So you upgrade your Kubernetes cluster to 122. You're feeling good. You finally got your upgrade process down. You're feeling confident about how you can do Kubernetes upgrades. And then your pager starts going off. Prod is down. Your boss is calling. Everything is not going right, right after you've upgraded. And you have no idea what to do, but you remember reading, well, I can't go backwards. I can't roll back a Kubernetes upgrade. What am I supposed to do? And after a bunch of digging, you start noticing, look, my ingress controller, it's in a crash loop back off. For anyone at Family Feud in the keynotes, crash loop back off, top Kubernetes error. So, yeah, we've, we've all seen that, I imagine. And so it's about time to panic because, well, what else do you do? Um, so what on earth went wrong here? Well, you probably know this is related to ingress. So to understand, let's, let's take a few steps back and understand the terminology we're going to use throughout this talk. So first off, we've got API group and version. So in your Kubernetes YAML manifest, you've probably seen something like this. The actual field name is API version. That's actually a little not quite correct. Uh, there's API version includes API group, that's networking.kates.io, and API version, which is v1 beta 1. And that's what we use for ingress up until Kubernetes 122 when all the things changed. And in this case, downtime resulted. So there's another aspect here, and that's the Kubernetes version itself. So the current Kubernetes version, I believe, is 131.1. Uh, so the major version is 1 here. Uh, and that is basically something that we don't expect to ever change. I certainly don't expect to ever see a Kubernetes v2. But if it did, that would be when breaking changes happened. And obviously, everyone's definition of a breaking change is different. As we just saw, there was a breaking change in a minor version upgrade, and things went wrong. So just keep that in mind. Minor versions are released three times a year and include new features and APIs and new API versions, which is what happened here. And then patch versions, that's that very last number, and that's just for uh, new patch, patches and bug fixes because as much as I'd love to say we never have bugs in Kubernetes, there's always enough content to go in a, into a patch release. So what happened here was in Kubernetes 1.19, we finally graduated Ingress to V1. Now, Ingress had existed at V1 beta 1 for nearly five years, which at that point in Kubernetes history was basically forever, right? So it had been this perma beta API, and there was this push to, hey, we should finally take these APIs that have stuck as beta forever and bump them up to v1. And what do you know? I was one of the people responsible for doing that. So sorry. Um, Ingress v1 was announced in Kubernetes 119, and we followed all the, all the correct processes. And at the same time, you're supposed to deprecate the previous version. So that meant in Kubernetes 119, we had a deprecation warning that v1 beta 1 is deprecated and going away. 
Then, one year later, in Kubernetes 122, Ingress v1 beta 1 was removed. So there's some problems here. Now, the vast majority of Kubernetes controllers use a single API version. So that sounds sensible, because that's just the most straightforward thing to do. But most Ingress controllers, in particular, try to support a very wide range of Kubernetes versions, so you don't have to look at every you know, support matrix to see, OK, I need this version of Ingress Nginx or Istio or whatever, or Contour, to run in this version of Kubernetes. So for a long time, you just didn't have to think about that. But this upgrade gave those Ingress controller authors two very bad options. The first option was re-architect your entire controller and support both Ingress v1 beta 1 for people that didn't have Ingress v1 and support Ingress v1 for people that didn't have Ingress v1 beta 1. And this is actually a huge re-architecture re -architecture in controllers, and I don't know of any controller that actually did that. So most controllers went the other op way, and they just said, we're only going to, we're going to issue one release that supports Kubernetes uh, 121 and older, and one release that supports 122 and newer, or something like, roughly like that. But there was no way to support 119 and 122 in the same controller. So what this means, this is an example of Ingress Nginx supported versions. They support the trailing five versions, roughly, right now. You can see, not exactly precise, but that's a rough idea. And then if you look at Istio supported versions, it's also roughly trailing five Kubernetes versions. And then you see they actually test another four or five versions beyond that. So you, you can imagine that Istio, in this case, they're basically supporting three years of Kubernetes upgrades. Uh, and this is really challenging if you only have one year where you, uh, between a deprecation and an API removal. And that was the huge pain point with this upgrade. So how on earth could you even avoid this? This was admittedly very painful. Uh, and you may say, well, OK, but hold on. I fixed everything. I switched all my manifests to be v1 instead of v1 beta 1. I remember this is exactly what I thought at the time. That, OK, well, if I just switch v1 in all my manifests, I'm going to be great. And so you, you've made this change, and you think, OK, well, I know v1 beta 1 is going away. I switched all my manifests. I'm great. The problem is, this is only the API version that you use when you're communicating with the API server. It has nothing to do with how the data is actually stored, and it has nothing to do with what your controller is actually using. And the problem here is what your controller is actually using. So let's go one step further. We have all these cool deprecation warnings, right? So if you were using a v1 beta 1 ingress, you probably remember seeing some kind of deprecation warning like this. But if you fix your manifest, you never saw it again. And so depreca deprecation warnings are only visible to the client that has the deprecation, right? So if your controller is using v1 beta 1, you're not going to see those deprecation warnings because you're not seeing the warnings your controller is seeing. It's a big problem. So why would we remove v1 beta 1 so soon? I was uncomfortable with this at the time, but the argument was that there would never have been a completely safe point to remove v1 beta 1. So if you look at Istio, for example, they support basically three years of Kubernetes versions. And that's just what they support in their most recent version. There's a long tail of users that are using old Ingress controllers. So imagine you're using an Ingress controller from two, three years ago, and you just haven't upgraded. That makes that trailing, that long tail even longer. So it's really challenging to know when is it actually safe. You can gradually increase this number, but it's never perfectly safe to remove v1 beta 1 in this case. So the argument was it's better just to rip the Band-Aid off than to drag this out forever and ever and ever. You can agree or disagree with that, but that is the official Kubernetes deprecation policy. For those curious, here's a link. Uh, but the expectation is that as soon as you deprecate an API, which is when you're releasing a new API version, if it's beta, you're going to have that beta API version removed in nine months or three minor versions. So in this case, three minor versions is roughly around a year right now. So that is the policy. Uh, it's worth discussing if this policy is correct or not, but that is the policy and what it is today. Um, 
And that is what it was also during this upgrade. And I'll also mention that GA API versions uh, could be marked as deprecated, but they're never going to be re removed unless we get to Kubernetes v2, which I just don't see happening. Uh, and then alpha API versions for anyone using that, just keep in mind that it could be gone at any point. So alpha means no stability at all. Just keep that in mind. So what could have helped here, at least? You know, we maybe couldn't have prevented this, but what are some things that could have helped us out here? So increasing the time between deprecation and removal could have helped to a point. We talked about that, but there's no way to ever cover every possible person. Uh, controllers could work to find a way to surface deprecation warnings to users. I think that would be very helpful, but ultimately that's still very difficult because there's not a really natural place to put it. Do you put it in your controller logs? Who looks at your controller logs? Do you, put, do you just spam a bunch of Kubernetes events? Well, that gets very noisy very quickly. It's, there's not a natural place to put this. Uh, a shameless plug that some managed providers like GK would just prevent upgrades altogether like this. So they'll, in this case, they'll show you, uh, you know, uh, the API version that's deprecated when it was last used. So whether that's by a controller or by you uh, and prevent you from upgrading if you're still using a deprecated API. There's also a lot of op open source projects that can help here. And I'll do a shout out to Fairwind's Pluto, which we've got someone from Fairwinds right here. I used to work at Fairwinds. I didn't work on that project, but it's a great one. Uh, these are great projects that can help you, you understand before an upgrade if it's actually safe to move forward. So they'll help highlight APIs that are deprecated before you upgrade. Okay, so let's take one more look at, well, we've got two more painful upgrades to go through. Let's take a look into Gateway API. And this is one that I am very recently responsible for, and this is gRPC route. So to understand a little bit about Gateway API, and I'll spend some time talking about Gateway API because as much as entry APIs have their challenges, CRDs are maybe another level of challenging because they're a little bit of Wild West without the same level of guardrails that we have in tree, uh, you know, where in tree you can't really move backwards. You can do whatever you want with CRDs. You can go from CRD version 10 to one and back and forth and all kinds of things. So you have to, it shifts a lot of the responsibility onto users. And so we need to understand if we're using CRDs, what this actually means. So in Gateway API, we have two concepts. We have an experimental channel and a standard channel. And the experimental channel is really the, the dangerous place uh, where there's experimental resources and experimental fields. And what that means in practice is don't expect any form of stability. There will be breaking changes here. Uh, we try to minimize them, but there will be breaking changes there. And then standard channel has nothing but GA resources and fields. And we've gone to a huge amount of effort over the three or so years that standard channel has existed to never have any deprecations uh, and make sure that you could always safely upgrade from standard channel to standard channel to standard channel without any of these issues. So for example, there is a V1 beta one in standard channel and it will never be removed. So there's V1 beta one and V1. Any API version that makes it in the standard channel is never ever going away. So if you stay in that path, you never have to worry. But there is an asterisk. So let's say uh, that I just go ahead and install gateway API standard channel. So this is the latest release of gateway API V1.2 and I wanna install gRPC route. And I know I just said that installing standard channel should always be safe, but you're seeing this really confusing error message. And don't worry because I know this is really tiny, so I blew it up a little bit. Um, but I don't know that making it bigger really helps you understand it. At least it didn't for me. So what this is saying is status.stored versions, there's some kind of invalid value in there. V1 alpha two must appear in spec.versions. And if you're like me, the first time you saw this, you're like, what on earth does this even mean, right? Like this is the most confusing error message I've seen. So fortunately, thanks to Jordan Liggett, there is a better error message on the way. I'm not going to pretend that this is just going to make you understand everything perfectly because this is still an incredibly complicated topic, but maybe it, we can walk through it and understand it a little bit more and it, at least you have the right things to Google uh, or search. <laughs> so in this case, uh, We've got gRPC routes and we're saying upgrading this CRD is invalid 
And what it's saying is the, stat, the stored versions in status have an invalid value. We've got v1 alpha 2 somewhere at, in, as a stored version for that CRD, but we don't have any API schema, any corresponding API schema to tell us what v1 alpha 2 even means. So what this means behind the scenes is somehow we're storing this old API version, but we have no idea what to do with it if we accepted this upgrade. So without ruining the suspense too much, this means that sometime, probably we forgot about it somewhere, we installed an experimental version of gRPC route and just forgot about it. And then we went to upgrade to Gateway API Standard Channel when gRPC route went GA, and the upgrade just failed because there's no alpha versions ever in Standard Channel, and so you get this very confusing message. So let's jump into what actually a storage version is. So every Kubernetes API has a specified storage version. This is the API version that is used to persist the data in etcd. So you remember how uh, we were talking about how you have that API version in your YAML manifest, and it's very easy to think whatever you put there is what's going to be stored, completely disconnected. Instead, you, that is what's configured at the API level. So this is the API version used to store that data in etcd, and CRDs have a stored version status field that looks something like this. So you have status.stored versions, and what gRPC route would have looked like is v1 alpha 2 and v1. And Kubernetes is not going to let you upgrade to a CRD that doesn't include some definition of the versions it has stored somewhere. So if it says, I have something stored in etcd for v1 alpha 2 and v1, or more correctly, that I at some point had something stored for v1 alpha 2 and v1, if you try and upgrade to a CRD that doesn't tell me what one of those is, so in this case, v1 alpha 2, I'm going to just not let you do that because I need a way to know how to get this out of etcd storage. But you're going to say, well, all my manifests say v1. And again, just a reminder, this is just how you're communicating between you and the API server, nothing to do with API server to etcd, nothing to do with storage version. So where on earth is storage version actually defined? If you dig into CRDs, I know CRDs are really massive and hard to look at, but if you just uh, command F, control F for storage, you'll find it. And there's two fields. Well, there's a field for each API version. And so in this case, you can say, OK, there was a, a version definition for v1 alpha 2, and that set storage to true. And then for v1, you see the same thing, but storage is set to false because only one API version can be set as a storage version at a time. So if a version has ever been used as a storage version, it will be added to status.stored versions on that CRD and prevent you from upgrading to a CRD that doesn't have that in the version definitions inside spec. Now, what's maybe the most frustrating part of all of this, this is never automatically pruned. So even if you've upgraded all your storage versions, and we'll talk about that shortly, that list is never pruned in status. So you have to do that yourself. Uh, so just keep that in mind as you're going, that even this is really just the CRD saying, I know at some point this is a stored version, and you have to tell me that you're no longer using it anymore as a stored version. So let's take a step back to that error message that, you know, even the improved error message is confusing, but let's see if we, it can make sense. So what's happening here is we're saying, inside stored versions, there's an invalid value alpha 2 because I don't see that in spec.versions. And the reason I don't see that in spec.versions is the version of the CRD you just installed is completely missing that v1 alpha 2 definition. So I have no idea what to do with it, so I'm just not going to let you install that. So this really is trying to prevent you from losing data or from any kind of painful upgrade, but it is sure awfully annoying to see. It, you know, this is trying to help you help you save you from yourself because this is you know, a good guardrail, but it is still very annoying and confusing to have to deal with. All right, so how do you get out of this? How do you actually migrate away from this? There are a few things. First, you need to ensure your CRD has the desired storage version. So we're going to switch the storage version to uh, v1 in this case. And you know, this is something that the CRD author would do for you, and they would update this in the release notes. That's what Gateway API does, or any other, anyone who's managing CRDs for you. 
And then there's the second step that can be automated, and we'll get to that, but the, the naive way to do it is you just update all your resources somehow. So anytime your data is saved, anytime you update a CR, so in this case, gRPC route, it uses the storage version that is configured at that point in time. So any write to gRPC route is going to update that storage version for that specific resource. So one of the ways to do this, one of the most common ways is just do some kind of no-op update, like an empty patch to all the gRPC routes in your cluster, and that's gonna update the storage version. There's some ways to automate that, but it's helpful to understand what's happening behind the scenes because it's really not that much. And then finally, as I mentioned, you kind of have to remove that old version from status.stored versions. And then finally, you can do that upgrade and just get rid of v1 alpha 2. Now, I, I should say, this is I'm walking through all the manual steps. Projects like Gateway API will tell you in hopefully less steps how to do this, but I just want you to understand what's actually happening behind the scenes. So there's one very cool thing that's coming in Kubernetes, and that's storage version migration. This is coming built into Kubernetes. It used to be part of Kube Storage Version Migrator. I think that was the name of the project, but now it's a built-in API in Kubernetes. It was alpha in, in 1.30. But in this case, if you wanted to move your, your, storage vi your storage version automatically, this can do that for you. You just say, hey, this gRPC routes resource, set it to v1, you apply this, and it's gonna migrate the storage version for you. So this is alpha in Kubernetes 1.30, and hopefully beta sometime soon. So just reminder, the only thing that's replacing from that step is, version two, is step two here. So this storage version migration, this doesn't remove all the steps, it removes step two. Now you say, why on earth is this all so complicated? Uh, because it is complicated. I can't, I can't sugarcoat that. But removing an API version is inherently dangerous. There's a risk of data loss if you don't follow these steps. In Gateway API, we go to very extreme lengths to ensure that if you just stay on standard channel, you never have to deal, about, deal with any of this. You just, you just have a happy path, and you never have to think about all these storage version migrations. If you don't use alpha APIs, generally, you just don't have to think about this. Um, but in some cases, migrating from experimental to standard is going to require you to take these extra steps because using an alpha API and then going to a GA API is a challenging process. I will say there's also a lot of work going on to make this less painful. This is open source, right? We're trying to make this slightly less painful as we go. So one thing I want to call out is I've focused a lot on all the storage version migration stuff. One kind of cheat code to all of this if, is if you just don't care about that data, so my example is I had an old gRPC route, CRD, I didn't care about, you can just delete and recreate it, and you don't have to deal with any of this. It's just gone. Uh, but that means you've lost any of your gRPC routes that were using alpha APIs. If you want to keep that data and, and keep everything running, then you need to go through this storage version migration process. Um, in Gateway API, there's been a lot of discussion about using different API groups for, for standard and experimental channel. That basically also removes this problem, but at the expense of just saying, you can never have a smooth upgrade path from experimental to standard. They're just different worlds. So you can have your experimental world, you can have your standard world, but you can't move between them. And so that's, if you're interested in that discussion, uh, that's a discussion on Gateway API. I've got a link there. But definitely interested in feedback. Is that a good idea? Is that a terrible idea? I uh, would love to hear what people think. Okay, so the last painful upgrade here is one of drop fields. And I'll be honest, this is at least somewhat theoretical, but only barely, because this is talking about things we're talking about doing very soon in Gateway API. So this is really only barely theoretical. So in Kubernetes upstream, we have these things called feature gates. Anyone toggled a feature gate before in Kubernetes? Okay, okay, that's more than I expected, actually, but feature gates are kind of hidden. They're, they're really, if you are setting up a cluster yourself, is generally the only way that you can toggle feature gates because most cloud providers, most cluster providers don't really expose that to you. But what that means is when you're adding a new field to an, a stable API, so in this case service, uh, you, we hide that behind a feature gate. We can't just add a new field and send it directly to GA, right? We need to have some kind of graduation process where we ensure it's working well and it's stable. So we hide it behind an alpha feature gate. And then 
Once it's, then it gradually graduates, once it meets uh, <laughs> graduation criteria from beta to GA. In Gateway API, we don't have that because CRDs in general just don't have feature gates. That's a huge problem. And so what we've done is we just said, OK, we're going to have an experimental channel that just has the equivalent of all alpha feature gates on, so just everything. Uh, and then we have standard channel, which is just GA only, so only the safe things. So experimental is every new thing that you could possibly want, and standard channel is nothing but the stable things. And so let's talk about how this could go poorly. So let's say we have Joe, and Joe installs Gateway API 1.2, standard channel. That's great. That's safe. That's everything you'd expect to happen. And then Sue, you know, unbeknownst to Joe, says, I really want to use this cool new authorization feature in HTTP route. This is something we are actually talking about right now. Uh, so she installs an experimental HTTP route CRD. Uh, and she uses that experimental authorization for her application. Then Joe goes ahead and he upgrades to gateway 1.3 standard channel. And what do you know, 1.3 standard channel still doesn't have that experimental authorization feature. And so that just completely disappears. And everything's getting through to Sue's app. And that's just not a good scenario. I, I will say, this is not a unique problem to Gateway API. Uh, this is really, you know, if you were toggling feature gates, if you're uh, enabling disabling features, if you're going between different versions of CRDs, this same problem could happen. But CRDs are cluster scope resources, and they really need to be managed centrally, or at least with some level of communication. And that's what I would say here. The real problem here is a lack of communication. Like so many technical problems, it could be solved if we could just communicate with each other and make sure we're on the same page when we're upgrading or changing API versions. Or you could also just use a cluster provider that manages the CRDs for you. Uh, for example, GK manages Gateway API, but there, I'm sure there are other cluster providers that will do something similar. All right, so let's, there's a lot in that. Uh, so let's do a very quick recap of all the terms here. So one, each Kubernetes API can expose multiple API versions. So for example, v1 alpha 1 or v1. And when a resource is saved, it's persisted with the storage version that's configured at that very point in time. It's completely disconnected from the API version you set in your manifest. CRD versions provide infinite flexibility, which is incredible. You can do so many things with CRDs, but they also have some sharp corners. There's nothing to prevent you from going backwards and installing an older version of a CRD. Or, and also, as we just found out, migrating storage versions can be incredibly painful. So although CRDs are very, very powerful, we have to recognize that they do have some sharp corners still, and we're working to smooth those over. And I want to call out what we're doing with Gateway API. So uh, one of the things you're going to see as a pattern throughout any, of, any controllers that are implementing Ingress, Gateway, anything of that nature, is they're going to try and choose the API version that has the widest possible range of version support. So in this case, if you're writing a Gateway API, API controller and you see the API versions that are available for HTTP route, it's pretty clear which API version you're going to use. You're going to use v1 beta 1 because that support, that's available in the last I can't do math, what, seven releases of Gateway API? Uh, and that's basically three years worth of releases for Gateway API. So you're going to use that because one controller can then support basically three years of CRDs. You could also use v1, but that's only going to be in the most recent Gateway CRDs. And the API versions are identical. So why not just use the one that is used more broadly? It's worth understanding if you ever see a de deprecated API version, Check with your ingress, gateway, whatever controller docs to understand what version they're using. But this is generally a good rule of thumb for what version they'll probably be using. Now, this is going to come as a bit of a surprise. But after all the bad things I said about using alpha API versions, I actually want to request that you please use alpha API versions. Uh, I wear the, the hat of an API maintainer for a gateway API and some, some other things. And oh my goodness. We need feedback. You know, if we have a huge problem in Kubernetes where if we don't get feedback for alpha APIs, we have a very hard time having any confidence in what's going to get to GA. So if you see a GA API at some point, you're like, man, how did this get to GA? It's awful. Well, part of the reason is we probably didn't get very much feedback 
before it got there, right? So we're, we're trying to, we have soak time, we have all these things to try and ensure that we're getting good feedback on alpha API versions, but that only works if people try it out and use it. With that said, please only use alpha API versions if you're okay with breaking changes and you're using them in a non-prod environment. Just never touch alpha in production. They, they, they just shouldn't coexist, right? Um, then keep some kind of inventory of each controller that's relying on an API and keep track of which API version or API versions they're using. And then finally, CRD management ideally should be centralized, but if not centralized, there should be some strong communication across the board. Now, real quickly, I want to talk about some things that are in progress. Uh, there's a lot of work on the gateway side to help smooth over CRD management in general. A lot of these things are deceptively more complex than they seem, such as improving CRD management with a Helm chart. You say, oh, well, that should just be really simple. I'll just spin up a Helm chart. This actually may require changes to Helm itself. So there's a, <laughs> there's a lot of complexity to actually managing CRDs. Then there's a lot of stuff going on outside of Kubernetes I want to call out the cap that's moving storage version migration into Kubernetes. That's a really helpful API. And if you want to help that move along, there's a link to the cap. Uh, and then second, I want to call out Cluster API because they have a really cool storage version migrator that automates more than just step two. And so we've been thinking about using something like that for a gateway API so it can do even more than the built-in tooling can. And then finally, I, I always have to shout, that, shout out, I know this was not a gateway API talk, but if you're interested in getting involved in Gateway API, we, we're doing a lot of things with CRDs and a lot of things to try and smooth over this experience. And we'd love uh, to get more people involved. Um, in the front row, we've got Nick Young, and he's doing a talk. If you're an API author, uh, th I definitely recommend this. It's 251 AD. It's not too far away anyways. I'll be headed there after this talk. Uh, if you're an API author and you're trying to understand how I can make this better for, for end users, definitely recommend this. There's a lot of pitfalls when you're developing an API that you want to watch out for. So recommend heading to that talk after. And then shameless plug, if you want to work on GK Gateway, we're currently hiring a PM. So definitely would love to work with more people. Uh, and with that, any questions? <laughs> Mike, I think, yeah. There's no mic, so we'll just have to. <laughs> um, yeah. Yes. Oh, I, yeah, OK. Mike called out a huge. So Mike was asking if it's possible to mark an API version as unserved. That's a huge and very good point. If you mark an API version as unserved, it means it's inaccessible to end users, so you can't actually use that API version, so your controller might still break. But what it means in practice is that second example I showed where it wouldn't let you upgrade the gRPC route, it solves that specific problem because the, the API schema is still in the CRD, so it knows how to handle it. It just won't let anyone actually use it other than the API server for conversion. So good point. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, yeah, I think we're basically completely lost if there's a breaking changes. So the question was, is there any storage version migrating tool that can help with breaking changes between alpha? If there is, I sure don't know about it. Uh, I think you're basically in a bad place if breaking changes happen in alpha. So good questions. Thank you.